Hello, hello, Instant Boss. I wanted to jump on a video really quick to give you some Facebook group engagement tips right now. First of all, I want to apologize because I am a little sick right now, so I know I'm sounding a little raspy, um, but hopefully we can get through this video without coughing too much. Um, the technique I want to show you today is one that I've created for myself in my own group. What I've seen that works and tried and tested tips that work for Facebook group engagement right now. And that is the R-E-A-L-S, the Reels technique for Facebook group engagement. So we're gonna walk through what each of those words stand for and how they're gonna help you with group engagement. So first of all, we're gonna jump right into it. I'm like a no fluff kind of girl. So let's get right into it. We are gonna start with the first letter, which is R. And this stands for raw images. So you'll see the photo on the left is a very produced photo. You can tell exactly what's in the photo. It is a product and Facebook knows it's a product as well. Facebook can read your photos. Let me show you. It is going to blow your mind. So I'm going to show you a few different photos in our Facebook group <clears throat> and what Facebook can read from your photos. So I pulled up the code over here on the left where you can see what Facebook is putting into their alt text program. So alt text is created for people with visual impairments. So it basically reads out loud what is in the photo and what they're seeing on Facebook. So this is what they would you would hear if you were visually impaired. And it says over here on the right, this may be an image of outdoors and a text that says life is better off road. And isn't that exactly what's in the photo, right? So what's kind of crazy with this and what I've noticed is the more produced an image is, the easier it is for Facebook to read the image. You can kind of hack this a little bit is what I've noticed. So if you add a lot of product in a photo where the products kind of cut out of the image or um, let's see if it's going to pull up for me. Okay. Or just something like this where there's a lot of colors in the image and even this, where it's really a close up of the product. I've noticed these do a lot better in the Facebook algorithm. And what's crazy, and I wanna show you, is when we go to look at what's behind the scenes and what's in this alt text, you'll see that it says no photo description available. So they weren't able to read this photo. And by the way, this photo has been up six hours as 50 comments, 21 likes, which is pretty good. Um, and let's see, what does this one say? It says it may be an image of saddle stitched leather, which is kind of crazy that it can read that by the way. And then this one says maybe an image of indoors. So obviously it wasn't able to read this image and it has 274 comments and 68 likes. So there is something to be said about posting the right photos. So if you're always posting images that are very staged, you can really tell what's in the middle of the image. You can just you know, even text on your images. So if you're gonna post a photo that says sale in it, Facebook's able to read that this is a photo that says sale. So keep that in mind when you're posting things on your Facebook group, that you want something to look less produced and more raw. So like I said, these are some examples of what that looks like to be more of a raw image. The next one is e-engaging. You have to be engaging for your audience. If you want them to show up for you, if you want the algorithm to work in your favor, you have to show up. Now, this can mean lots of different things, right? This could mean posting engagement graphics, like some of these right here, or it could even mean creating a caption that allows and promotes people to want to comment on your post. So instead of putting something like, Oh, we're loving this t-shirt. It's so great for summer. We have it in these colors and this size and here's how much it is. Like really, why would I want to comment on that? I'm not asked to comment on it. So instead, maybe a caption that says something like, would you wear this out to a night with the girls? Or would you wear this to a date with your boyfriend? Or whatever it is. Asking them this or that questions. Asking them to comment and tell you what they would wear it to you. Um, or even something as simple as comment below and let me know, do you like this style? Should I buy more of it for the store? Those are also examples of call to actions and engaging um, 
just content. So you'll see that these images here are all different. They all look, you know, different based on the boutique's logo. Um, we have created a different background for each person, and this is included in the Small Shop Social membership. So if you are a Small Shop Social member and you don't have your background yet, please let us know so we can get that for you. And if you do and you're not inside a Small Shop Social, guys, it's a game changer. Let me just show you really quickly what comes inside the Small Shop Social app. So we like to present ourselves as basically a service provider. Um, we are providing you with the content that you need to use on social media to be successful. So you'll see every single day you get three images, a hashtag, a caption, and a morning and afternoon and an evening post idea. And then you'll also see on the left you get vendors lists, news, templates, all that good stuff. If you are a small shop social member and you need help navigating your small shop social membership, we are more than happy to help you. Just reach out to me and I can give you kind of a walkthrough of where you should start, what you should be doing, and that sort of thing. If you are not a small shop social member and you're ready to take the plunge and start seeing engagement on your Facebook, please message me. I'm happy to walk you through how to get signed up. So A in our reels technique is authenticity. You can't be selling all the time. People don't want to be sold to all the time. In this day and age, we want to feel connected with who we're buying for. Um, that's why you see so many businesses these days, you know, donating to charities and that sort of thing, because there's that connection there. And you know that you're helping support somebody with your purchase. So you can go from a charity point of view where you're donating some money, but you can also do this in just a unique way to you. Like I said, people want to connect with you. So posting pictures of you and your product. And again, this can really help with that raw image aspect as well. But sharing stories of your life, even just going live with your audience just to pack orders and talk to them about their day, pray for them, whatever it is that, you know, is your personality, do that and post photos of you in the product and explain how they could feel if they wear it. Oh my gosh, this feels so soft. It's so stretchy. Like, oh, I could just hang out all day long in this at my house, relaxing, watching Netflix. You need to explain to them why they need this product. You really have to sell, but in an authentic way that makes sense for you. So the L, limit sales lingo. So this is very, very important. And it's a reason that a lot of you end up not getting very many comments on your sales posts. It's because Facebook knows it's a sales post. <laughs> Facebook can read your posts based on the words that you're using and deciding, they decide if they want to show it in the algorithm. Do they want to show sales posts? They know that, you know, people on their platform don't want to be sold to all the time. So they're not going to show those all the time. So the more you can mask that you're selling something, the better. Like, for example, like I said before, saying something like, would you wear this out with the girls or would you wear it out on date night? Where would you wear this? Or something like that. And what's crazy about some of the words that you use is it can really be a lot of things. It can be um, dollar symbols. It can be the word sale. It can be um, sometimes even the word wear. Would you wear this? Because they know you're talking about something you're selling. So you really have to get creative in the words that you're using. One th other thing I want to just touch on really quickly is when you put a ca uh, link in your caption. So when you say, here's the link to purchase, and you put a link in your caption, you are lowering your reach significantly. If you notice and you're in my Facebook group, you'll see that I rarely ever post anything that has um, the link in the caption. You'll even notice that with our wholesalers too. So they're not doing it either because I've trained them not to do this because I know it limits their reach. And what I mean by that is if somebody has the link to outbound click to your website, it's great, right? They're going to purchase and that sort of thing. They're also taken off of Facebook. And Facebook wants them to stay on Facebook. So whatever link posts, they just don't get good engagement for that reason is what I'm suspecting. So if you can get creative, obviously it's going to be more work. But having people comment below, let me know if you need this or something like that. And when they comment below, then you respond to each comment with the link. You do have to be very careful with this because... If you comment the same thing over and over and over again, you're going to get in trouble, get put in Facebook jail. So you have to get creative with the way that you're responding to people if there are a lot of comments on your post. 
The last letter of the Reels technique is scheduling. And one of the biggest things that frustrates me that I see all the time in the group is people saying, no, don't schedule it lowers your reach wrong. No, it doesn't. It doesn't lower your reach. It actually helps you in so many ways if you're doing it right. And if you're using a third party scheduler, something like SendShare, um, or Hootsuite or later, or these types of things, Yes, it can lower your reach because you're connecting an outbound app into Facebook. But if you are actually using the tools that Facebook has given you for free to schedule, they love it. There, there's no reach lowering. There's nothing like that. And guess what? You're setting yourself up for success because we all know we're procrastinators. If you're anything like me, you're a major procrastinator. And... The last, I'm going to say, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll post that picture tomorrow. Uh, I'll find that engagement post tomorrow. I'll post it then, or I'll post it later. I'm going to take a nap right now. We can push it off and push it off. But if we force ourselves once a week, even, or once a month, you could do it all at once. Once a week, schedule out your content. At least get your engagement posts out, or at least get your new arrivals out. Whatever it is, get that on the schedule. And guess what? You can sit back and just respond to comments. You don't have to worry about the posting part. It's already done. You could go hang out with your family for an extra hour. It's amazing. It's life changing if you get it right. So that is the end of our um, reels technique. But I did want to add one more thing. And sorry, I'm out of breath. Like this cold is crazy. Um, <clears throat> but the last tip I wanted to give you is use the group questions to your advantage. So what I mean by that is when somebody requests to join your Facebook group, you can ask them to answer three questions. And I suggest that those three questions be, would you like to be added to our email list and we'll give you an extra 10% off your next order or some kind of incentive for joining the, your email list. Um, the next one should be, will you want to opt into our tech services? Drop your phone number below and we'll send you some kind of discount code or whatever that is. Um, and then the last one, if you have an app, I would suggest, hey, did you know you could shop our new arrival straight from our app and be the first to know? Our app is blah, blah, blah in the app store. Let me know in the comments or in the reply if you've downloaded it or not. And those could be your three questions. So already from the bat, you're getting their phone number, their email address, and you're getting them to download um, your app. If they don't do all three and they don't answer the questions, obviously you still let them into the group. But if they do answer those questions, now you have extra avenues of reaching out to these people outside of Facebook. I hope this really, this quick little training helps you to get more Facebook engagement. That's my whole goal here. I know the power of Facebook groups and what they can do for your business. They can really help sell sales overall in your business. And I strongly believe in using Facebook groups, by the way, more than pages. And I love, love, love giving tips as they come. We all know that the Facebook algorithm is changing all the time. What's working right now might not work next week. And that's why inside of Small Shop Social, I am always telling my members, hey, this is changing. This is what's coming. This is what you need to be doing. Try this out. What do you think? And we're always testing and working it out together. That's one of the perks of being a member. Again, you also get mentors that are successful in the boutique industry um, that can also answer your questions when it comes to other things that are outside of social media and outside of, you know, my expertise, they can help you with those questions. So it's really an awesome opportunity to be part of a membership that is a game changer. So if you need any help on signing up to be a small shop social member, be sure to let me know. You can also head to Instant Boss Club dot com for more information on small shop social and if you are a small shop social member and you need more one-on-one -on -one help just reach out to me i am more than happy to help you and help answer any questions you have i'll talk to you guys later